Last hour, we showed you the reality for thousands of Georgia's children who age out of the state's foster care system every year. During our Channel 2 Action News investigation, we discovered that Georgia foster care children are vulnerable to fraud. We found dozens of foster kids have had their identity stolen. Channel 2's investigative reporter Erica Byfield explains what's being done to help them. Georgia started running credit checks on foster kids vulnerable to fraud statewide. Federal leaders called for this change four years ago, so we wanted to know what took the state so long. A suburban, credit cards, utilities, all things an elementary school student in foster care shouldn't be able to buy, but Aaron told us his credit report says he did. I've never had a car in my life. He spent 13 years in foster care, shuffled between group homes and family, then years on the streets, homeless. Aaron says he's been flooded with credit problems since 21. That's when he realized someone stole his identity. I'm 25, I'm approaching the age where I want to get a house, get a car, and I'm tired of riding a bus. <laughs> But right now I have no choice because I can't get those things. Currently, there are about 10,000 kids in Georgia's foster care system. They're susceptible to be taken advantage of. Federal leaders wanted tougher regulations. That's why in 2011, the president signed a law to protect foster youth from fraud. It requires credit checks to make sure there aren't any inaccuracies. Originally, it was for kids 16 and up. Now it includes children as young as 14. The federal government gave states time to comply. Georgia rolled out the statewide credit check program last month. Why is it taking so long? Well, it's a process of the implementation, also being able to access the partners that you would need to do it. So far, the Division of Family and Children's Services has run credit checks on 182 kids and found 32 inaccuracies. Any fraud on any level is a severe issue and we take it very seriously. Research from Emory University's law school shows people who know the children normally commit the crime. Melissa Carter says it's friendly fraud. We often see parents or other caregivers or relatives or friends of children actually misappropriating their identity for other purposes. Aaron, like a lot of foster kids, moved often. He lived in 15 different group homes. Each time his social security number and other sensitive information moved with him. It's not protected like it should be. It's handed off to different people without a second thought of who the information is getting, being given to. He told us at one point he lived in this Southwest Atlanta home with his uncle, the man he now suspects stole his identity. I was on the street and he was living it up off of in my expense. Once the inaccuracies are found, the state works to fix the problem before the foster youth becomes an adult. We asked DFACS about prosecuting the alleged identity thieves. Dr. Nia Canty said bringing the crime to the attention of law enforcement is not their priority. So you don't want to go after the person who did this? I think our first goal is to really just primary address correcting it. I think that's something that we can explore as we continue to see the number of inaccuracies. What is that to think about? I mean, that was a crime that was committed. Too old to ask the state for help. Aaron is still waiting for his credit problems to wash away and thinking about those in care. Some other young man and woman is going to have to deal with this. Emory's research showed that some foster care victims of fraud may be hesitant to file police reports because their friends and family may be tied to that fraud. But the state hopes with these credit checks that will be run on the youth's birthday, that will change. In the newsroom, Erica Byfield, Channel 2 Action News.